everyone, I'm Chester44 and welcome to this Let's Play of Neverwinter Nights 2, Mysteries of Westgate. Last episode, we, uh, we spoke with the Faceless himself, a vampire, and killed him. We also found out about the Cursed Mask. It turned out it belonged to a priestess who was so consumed by revenge that she didn't die. Or something like that. Well, we still don't have a cure, but the mass has been leading us to this point here. So it's time to investigate. A large pile of junk is stacked against the wall. Hidden behind the pile, you see a long tunnel leading into darkness. Enter the tunnel. Well, let's see where this goes. Curse of the Mask. Ugh, this place smells horrible. The stench of death and the dying. Evil. I can feel it in my skin, in my hair, in my... my teeth. Unless I miss my Geth, Alawith, we've gone quite a ways underneath the city. And to think that no one knows it's here. Quiet. Do you hear that? What? The sound of flowing liquid, like water through pipes. But where is it coming from? Yes, I think I... Yes, I think I hear something, too. And there's something else. Is it a faint pumping sound? And quite regular, too. Almost as if it's a... Heartbeat? Unholy ho unholiness! Okay, everyone, let's just get this over with. Right, I'm ready. After you... I don't think I actually need to wear the mask anymore, so if you don't mind, get rid of those horrible spirits. Thank you. Let's just wear that again. What's this? Oh. Get back to your pen, meat. Hmm. What's this knocking at my door? Visitors? A fleshling! Come in! We were just about to uh, eat. Oh dear. Okay. Gnome vampire leader turned into a wolf. Oh dear, there's something else over here. Yeah, more gnome vampires. And you handle that one. I'll handle these. Why are gnomes in? Why are these gnome vampires? Oh, now that I look, what the hell is this? What is all those onions? I think we got them all. What the hell is this place? The creature standing before you seems only vaguely aware of your presence. Despite the pale skin, unseeing eyes, and lethargic movements, this pathetic figure appears to be human. What have they done to him? He's full grown, and yet he stumbles and mules like a babe. Human livestock. We should put him and the others out of their misery. Right after we deal with those who are responsible for this. It makes sense, doesn't it? The Night Mask needed a way to feed all those vampires without drawing attention to themselves. What better way than to start their own blood factory? The feeble man turns in your direction. Who are you? The man cocks his head at the sound of your voice but offers no response other than to edge away from you. Is there some way I can help you? The man does not respond, but his complete lack of understanding is answer enough. There is nothing you can do for this poor creature. Leave. Oh dear. Manual of blood harvesting? 
A large leather-bound book rests here among the dried bloodstains and scattered bones. Take the book. This ghastly tome appears to be a manual on the breeding and harvesting of human cattle. The first few pages contain an overview of the process. Once born, the cattle is to be aged to maturity over the course of several days in accordance with the rituals outlined herein. Attempting to speed up the process may produce inferior results. On the other hand, allowing a cattle to live past its harvesting date may give it time to develop muscle control or an increased level of consciousness, making it more difficult to control. When the cattle is mature, it is to be bled according to the instructions herein. Sloppy work will not be tolerated. The cattle are the property of Orbach for use in sustaining his kingdom. To spill or otherwise waste their blood is to steal from the Night King himself. Once the cattle has been completely drained, its blood is to be delivered to the Brother Tobias Winery for final processing and storage. Cattle remains should be disposed of in one of the prescribed ways. One final note, at no time are you to disturb the Banshee or her guardian. Their presence frightens off unwanted visitors and is therefore vital to the security of the operation. The Night King takes great pleasure in the role they serve here and will impose great suffering upon any who di- Any who what? Any who dare interfere with them. Oh, God. This place is horrible. Obiteltis! Still dressed in the tattered remains of his expensive clerical vestments, Obit's butchered corpse is covered in blood. Oh, shit. This got bad. Skeletal minions? Sir Peregrim. Run away, intruder. Let fear give you flight. You have seen many horrors in this place, but there is naught that can prepare you for the horror of your own death. I know this well. Who are you? I am accustomed to introducing myself as Sir Peregrine, Knight of Tear. But in truth, I am no longer that person. Fear stripped me of my honorable titles, even before death took the rest of my identity. How did you die? It is a lengthy tale, but I will tell you if you wish. Perhaps it will make you understand why you should be afraid. I was the companion of Alandra of the Flails. More than that, in truth. We were united by love, in addition to our common cause of fighting the Night Masks. Together, we discovered the unspeakable secret they were hiding from Westgate. You're speaking of the vampires in the Court of Nightmasters. The revelation that the Nightmasks were run by vampires was only the prelude to a greater horror. The real revelation was this butcher operation they are running in this place. By breeding and magically aging humans, the Nightmasks ensure a constant food supply for their blood-sucking minions. It allows the number of vampires within their ranks to increase dramatically. Not anymore. We put a stop to it. Did you? And for how long? Alandra and I also foiled their plan. Temporarily. Clearly, they have recovered, and they will recover again. At the time, the operation was in its infancy. Alandra was the one who learned of it and led the charge into battle. I followed her for as long as I could. But then, the fear began to take hold of me. Not the magical variety vampires use against their enemies, something more deep-seated. When swords were drawn and fangs bared for our final assault on the night masks, I did what my nature demanded. I ran. Unfortunately, it was too late. The night masks overtook me. The last thing I saw was a Landra fighting her way toward me. Whether to heal me or kill me, I do not know. You deserve worse than death for your cowardice. I got worse than death, warrior. Before she was cut down, a Landra cursed the night masks and me alike. Upon my own passing, I became a death knight, condemned to guard a Landra for eternity. Or should I say, what's become of her? 
It's not enough. You were given the chance to defend your love. A chance I never got. And yet you willingly threw it away. You deserve only non-existence. I challenge you, Sir Peregrine. You have gained a sort of bravery in death. Have you also the honor to duel me? I do not have honor, warrior. However, the idea of a duel amuses me. It stirs something inside me. Some part of my being that still holds to the customs of the living. Mm. Yes, you will have your wish. These creatures that surround me are bound to my will. As long as I stand, I shall not allow them to interrupt our duel. And when you fall, what happens then, Death Knight? If I fall, the creatures will be free to act on their bloodthirsty impulses, of course. But do not concern yourself with that. Concern yourself instead with your comrade, whose entrails I shall soon be devouring. Cursed abomination! I will destroy you in the name of... In the name of Lathander! Oh, I can do that. Mentees is blessed by Lathander? That's unexpected. The rest of us aren't involved. It is literally just a duel between me and the Lef... Between Mantids and Peregrim. He's definitely going to win. He's barely taken any damage, but bloody hell. He's gotten very strong, too. This is unexpected. Oh boy. By the blessed light of Lathander. My lord, you have returned to me. I can feel your presence once more. What is this? Dawnbringer? My armor? I am unworthy of this miracle you have bestowed upon me, blessed morning lord. Yet I swear that I shall never fail you again. I swear it with every action of this body and soul nurtured by your light. Tasheni. My lord, I do not mean to be ungrateful, but what shall become of her? Mentid's eyes close and his lips move slowly. A single tear runs down his cheek, and when he opens his eyes again, the reborn paladin is smiling. He has shown her the blessed light. Tesheni has been granted eternal peace and a place in his house. Lathander has reclaimed her from the darkness as he did me. I must thank you for your help in setting me back on the path of the light. With your guidance, my soul has been rescued. Let us now do the same for this poor spirit. Well then. The scythe and ring of the shattered vow. What is this ring? This ring is inset with a once priceless emerald, now riddled with countless cracks and splinters. Sir Peregrim likely wore it as a symbol of his bond with Alandra, a bond that was broken when he betrayed her on the battlefield, leaving her to die at the hands of the Nightmasts. After his death, Peregrim would go on to become a Death Knight, and his ring would continue to exist in tainted form as well. Interesting. Direct me. You are carrying too many things. Mantide's full plate. This magic armor grants additional protection to its wear. Okay. Oh! Oh, that's actually very good. Okay, the full plate plus two is going to the cleric. You're wielding that, you're wielding that. Shining Light of Lathander. Oh, but we also have Dawnbringer. This great sword bears the sun symbol of Lathander above the guard, from which a golden light radiates. The length of the sword's blade is flawless, the surface so polished that its reflections are almost mirror-like. Only a warrior of the purest heart can wield this sword, and woe betide those who find themselves the target of its deadly wrath. Oh, that is a very good weapon. Protection from evil unlimited, spell resistance, enhancement bonus, more enhancement bonus against evil, damage bonus against evil. Oh, he got good stuff. Lathander's favor. Oh, we already have that one. Okay. We are...
very good here. Yes, you will be using that. These two can be sold. I mean, I'll let him hold on to the shining light of Lathander, it seems fitting, and Lathander's favor. But damn! And you're now a level 14 paladin. With all the feats and everything that come with it. Well now. This is beautiful. I am certain. And read to me. you have a few spells. I think I think I'm going to replace dispel magic with prayer. Level two is fine. Level one is fine. Okay, let's get a certain. rest in. Uh, this is simply too much. Oh yes, you uh you need to replace. Sure. Your armor. There Follow we go. Now. Okay. Let's save before we go into what is likely the final room. All right, let's go in. There's Alandra. The Banshee. Don the mask. It is the only thing that can save you from me. Why do you seek to warn me? What is coming? Please. I can barely control my impulses as it is. You must protect yourself. Please, hurry. If you say so. Ask the team a new power. I don't know what. Use fear, use ghostly visage, bonus his points, lose concentration, immunity to death, magic, and mind affecting spells. Okay, I'll take it. Well, she's defeated. This is delicious. The little mortal slays the faceless, the only creature in Westgate that could have challenged me. Then my dear friends, Altama and Tasheni, and then adds another dozen cursed souls to my collection. Who the heck are you? It's a shame you put that undead witch to rest before I arrived. She would have made a great prize. I wonder if you'll be nice enough to let me have your soul as a replacement. I remember you. I, what's this talk of souls? Who are you, really? Who am I? That question has a thousand separate answers on a hundred different planes. But in the here and now, I am Zymina. I must confess, however, that I am not quite all that I appear. I must confess, I never expected this to be quite so easy. That foolish creature Tasheni and her were-rat puppet didn't suspect a thing. A ruse within a ruse within a ruse. Hardly a complex web to my kind, but enough to ensnare those two. I am slightly disappointed in Orbach. I had heard such promising things about him. I can hardly wait to claim his soul for the Blood War. The Blood War? First things first, however. Demon or Devil? Oh dear. My thanks for all your work on my behalf, little puppet. You've been a most excellent tool. The players are all dead, and to the victor goes the spoils. What the? What? Who dares? Always make sure you understand the nature of the game before declaring yourself the winner, fiend. What the? Oh dear god, that's hideous. To trick me, mortal. I saw the faceless perish. For your arrogance, I shall inflict an eternity of torments upon your worthless soul. What the hell is going on anymore?
Okay, let's get these Aranese dead and then kill this Zymina who came out of nowhere. Alright, now Zymina. I think I'll get some smiting bills out of you. I think maybe we need the Divine Wrath. Okay. That Zymina is dead. Oh no. What's going on? Thank you, stranger. Because of your heroism, the curse has been lifted. And I am free to go to the throne of my god, and receive the eternal reward I have been promised. But before I go, know that my wrath will be sated, my retribution complete. This place, this wretched place, will be obliterated and buried beneath the very mass of Faerun. By my hand, the evil that occurred here will be lost to the memories of humankind forever! Uh, maybe let However, us leave first? No more blood will ever again be spilled here, and certainly no more of yours. Come, and let me transport you to safety. Go with my blessing, and with my thanks. Oh, thank you. So glad that you decided to let us leave before destroying the place. Okay, um... You awaken. Good. Wait. That wretched spirit may have bought you a few extra minutes of life, but the game ends now. Your part is done. It is time that I removed the final piece from the board. Orbach, you were destroyed. Suffice to say that in Westgate, anything is possible. Vampires don't die easily, and that applies tenfold to an archmage. You did what I had planned for you to do, to a point. I suspected Tesheni was behind the Ebon Claws, but she was never my equal, or even close. Whoever was leading the organization was almost my match. I needed to take drastic action to draw out the greater power. I faked my own death, and you were my tool. Indeed, I sacrificed two of my servitor vampires, as well as Tobias and the winery, in order to ensnare you. Had you performed your role and left, I would have allowed you to live, perhaps. I did not plan for the cursed spirit to reveal the location of my greatest operation. The factory was the source of blood that was to feed the empire I am forging. You destroyed it, and with it, inflicted considerable damage to my plans. Why are you telling me this? Because you have won my respect, and that warrants an explanation. Be glad, few are given this honor. But enough talk. It is time for you to die. The morning sun rises over Westgate, its first gentle rays sweeping the shadows of night from the dingy streets. Can you protect no, yourself from the sun? Not now! <laughs> What's the matter? You are looking a little pale. You could use some sun. The morning sun isn't nearly strong enough to destroy me as it might my servants. I have time enough to return to my lair. Make sure you are gone from the city by the time the sun sets once more, or my servants will hunt you down. That is a promise. I'll be back, Orbach. I have a stake with your name on it. Orbach doesn't reply. He simply regards you with his hypnotic gaze, a look of respect and hatred that promises much should you ever meet again.
the end. Is that it? What about my companions? Okay, uh, I guess there's no closure for my companions? Sure, why not? That's unfortunate and sucky. Okay, so, uh, I guess that's the end of this. As for what I thought of it, overall, several of the side quests were actually very interesting, and I did like some of them. Some kind of silly as well, especially the one with the, uh, what was it? The ferret and the hamster, was it? Whatever. Uh, so, some of it was interesting. The main quest was okay. That ending seemed to get kind of out of nowhere. What? I have no idea what was going on with that demon or devil or whatever it was at the end. And, uh... Yeah, I feel like maybe there would have been more to the story if we had gone with the, uh... Whatever they're called instead. The were-rats. I... I... Ebon Claw, that was it. We probably would have gotten more out of it if we'd gone with the Ebon Claw. Especially because they suddenly seem to be coming out of nowhere in the end. How? How? We, we barely spoke with them, and suddenly they're a big part of it? We probably should have gone with the Ebon Claw in the beginning instead of going on the good side. I, I don't know. It was okay. I wouldn't call it great, but it was okay. And with that, that's it for Neverwinter Nights 2. All the campaigns have been done. The original campaign, Mask of the Betrayer, Storm of Zehir, and Mysteries of Westgate. Everything done. I can finally put this game behind me. And that's not a bad thing. I'm not saying that in a bad way. I enjoyed the game. As I said in the previous ones, the original campaign, I loved some of the parts in it. The second one was also a fascinating campaign. The third one had its ups and downs, and this fourth one, well, you just saw it. I enjoy Neverwinter Nights 2, and I enjoyed the original Neverwinter Nights. Bioware has always been a favorite company of mine for quite a while, until... yeah. but. Still, they had plenty of good games long ago. Baldur's Gate is one I really do need to actually play through sometime. I played it once, but it didn't hold me enough to continue through. I, I think it was just my frustration from, well, a D and d rule set and just not used to it. <sighs> Dragon Age I did play the original, but I never played the sequels. By that point, EA firmly had its talons in Bioware and Poison, and I just never had enough interest to keep playing. Mass Effect, I loved that series, and I played through it all, even if the ending did really fall. Knights of the Old Republic, whew, the original Knights of the Old Republic was a great game, and Knights of the Old Republic 2, good but flawed. And those were the games that Bioware did, and I played most of them and enjoyed them all. Well, many of them. Didn't play all of them, as I said. And Neverwinter Nights 2 always holds a... It holds a part in my heart. It was the first RPG I ever played, and the one that got me into D&D, so of course I loved it. So what's next? Any of you paying attention may have noticed that there was a game that I didn't list there among Bioware's repertoire. I think maybe we'll give that one a go. You're gonna have as much reading from me, not as much on the voices, but I haven't played it in so very long. I think it'll be good to go through it again. But that'll be in the next episode. And that'll be next time. So, until then, I'm Chester44. This has been a playthrough of the entirety of all the campaigns in Neverwinter Nights 2. This has been quite enjoyable with all the characters I've done. And 
I shall see all of you in the next game. Prepare for Oriental.